All right, so welcome back. So we have quantitative and qualitative variables. So what's the key thing and what's the differences? I'll try to illustrate it by showing you examples, things that you can think about. Number one, so variable, I have it uh, written down as you see on the screen, is something which we can in some way measure. And now these quantitative and qualitative variables typically will relate back to some statistics if you're taking that, but they don't have to. Now, a variable is measurable, is easy to understand when we are measuring things, for example, like volume, right? Or we are measuring somebody's height, we're measuring the speed of a car, so all of those things, which most of the time would be known as quantities, so we can, so notice quantity, so quantitative in some way, so we can measure them. But there are also things that are measurable that are not necessarily just quantities. They might be qualitative of nature. So for example, the level of a patient's pain is measurable in some sense if you ask somebody but that's not necessarily a number that you can quantify in some way, but you can ask a patient on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is the most severe, what is your pain level at? And that's commonly sometimes used in emergencies and triage in the beginning. And then a patient would say, my level's around eight or nine. If they're in triage and in the ER, they're typically in some kind of a discomfort. So, here are some examples of some variables, and I'm gonna come back to those examples because there's a little bit to say about quantitative and qualitative. Patient's temperature reading. So that is something that we can certainly measure. Now you might think of this, so temperature reading would be quantitative because we can measure it and we can actually obtain a direct number with a thermometer, for example, so thermometer. So that would be quantitative in some way. So this is quantitative, I'll right? Maybe what I'll do is I'll just write QN for quantitative, that we can obtain some number. Now, lactic level of an athlete right after exercise. And this one is tricky because you may not know anything about lactic level or exercising or anything like that. But that is also something that we can measure typically maybe even through taking blood samples, or something like that. So that would also be a quantitative because we can measure it and we can obtain a, a direct number, a measurement for that number of that lactic level that an athlete has. So this one is a little tricky, but this one's quantitative. Now, color of leaves in October. So the color of leaves is not a quantitative variable it's a qualitative one so now the leaves can take on different colors now of course there's a stream of different colors that you might see you know from yellow to red of course they might change in some way but this is qualitative so i'll write ql for qualitative number of students with a b plus Right, so we can count this in some way. We can actually count if we have a class or a grade, we can count the number of students that have a B plus. That would be quantitative. We can put a number on that as well. We can say there's you know eight students with a B plus or something like that. So this is quantitative. Flow of medication from an IV. So if an IV is flowing, so if you're say a patient and you have been set up on an IV, the flow typically would be some kind of a rate. So for example, volume flow rate that you have been set up on, and that can be measurable. You actually would have a reading as well that you can kind of see how much nowadays, how much a patient would be receiving. So that is another quantitative variable. Patient's pain level during triage ER assessment. I talked about this already. This would be qualitative. Now, although it might be ranged between one and 10 or whatever the doctor might ask you or the nurse, 
Okay, it seems like, oh, but I answered eight or five. Isn't that a number? It is a number, but the pain level itself, you know, you it's easier for a human being to tell you one to 10 because they can gauge in between. If they say, oh, it's kind of hurting really hard, you know, that's the pain level, and then you can associate it with a number, but it's not necessarily quantitative because it's not like you can measure it directly, right? Or you cannot count it. So if you cannot measure it with some kind of a tool and in, say in terms of measure like a temperature reading, blood pressure reading okay, for a patient, this you're actually really just gauging it. So it's qualitative. Drug symptoms during treatment. Again, that's not something that you can measure with the tool. You would get those symptoms. These would be qualitative variables that you have. Swimmer times for a 50 meter race. So this one is quantitative. So I hope that these examples can give you the difference between quantitative and qualitative. So things that are measurable within some devices or are countable in some way, and then things okay, that are more qualitative, like the leaf's colors, human beings, eye color or hair color. All right, so that's what you have, or skin color, for example. So all of those things are qualitative. Now, with quantitative and qualitative, so coming back to here, so now we know kind of the difference, at least through some examples, quantitative and qualitative, and you have to see a few examples to be able to see them. And then they're measurable in some way. And sometimes they're measurable by simply someone else telling you how they're, um, for example, the pain levels, right? Or being able to see them directly, the colors of the leaves. So we can measure these things in some, in some way. Now it turns out that quantitative, so I'm gonna put quantitative here and then I'll put qualitative here. There are two disting distinguishing features between them when you're talking about these variables. Now for quantitative, so when you have a quantity that we can measure in some way, there's actually two things that can happen. It can be continuous or it can be discrete. Now, what is the difference between continuous and discrete? So I'm gonna to try to give you an example from the ones that we had. So for example, if I go here, patient's temperature reading, it is quantitative, but it is continuous. Now, what does continuous mean in terms of kind of taking a measurement? So if you take a temperature, so an easy way to tell if it's continuous or if it's discrete, let's say if you take the temperature reading and let's say the temperature reading of a patient is this, and then you, know, you have another temperature reading which might be this. Now the question always is, if it's continuous, are there any values in between? That, is there a continuity between one and the other? Can we have a temperature reading that is between 35.2 and 37.2? Or for that matter, between any temperatures, even if they're really close, like 35.2 and let's say 35.25. You know, can I still stick something in between? Is there a continuity between them? And the answer is, of course, temperatures are continuous. It can keep going, you know, there's a level that you have. Okay, in between and you can keep sticking okay, temperatures somewhere in between these two. There's always continuity between them that you have. Now let's take a look at some of these examples that we had here. So lactic level of an athlete. So is that continuous in some way? So if you have a certain amount of lactic level, again, it's gonna be some number that you have. Okay? You, it is indeed a continuous strand for this it can continue. So that is continuous in some way. Number of students with a B plus. Now this, is this continuous or is it discrete? And what does discrete mean? Discrete, for example, now you have number of students. So you have one student, two students, three students, four students, and so on. So the test, okay, if it's continuous means can you have something in between the numbers, between one and two. 
you can't, right? I mean, it's not like we want to be able to, you know, take the students and divide them in half or something. You either have one student that got a B plus. It can't be 1.5 students got a B plus or 1.2. So there is a jump, okay? So that makes it discrete because these discrete values keep jumping from one to another value. Now, they don't have to be just between one, two, three, four. The values can still be discrete, even if it's, for example, 0 0.5, 0 0.8. And there is, if there is no values here in between, then that makes it discrete. So let's take a look at these examples that we have here. So number of students with a B plus, so this is definitely discrete. It's not a continuous reading that we can have. It's discrete, it's fixed, one, two, three, and so on. Next one, flow of medication from an IV. This one is continuous, continuous, because when you set up your IV, the amount of volume that actually flows per whatever time, per minute, for example, you can always change. You know, if there's 10 milliliters per minute flowing and 11 milliliters per minute flowing, there is a value 10.5. And then again, between 10 and 10.5, you can also set another value in between. That makes it continuous so that you can have always values in between all of these. Now, what else was here? This one, this last one, swimmer times that you have, this is also continuous. Now, because of counting something countable, so number of students, number of IVs that you bought, number of phones that you had in the last 10 years, those are all discrete values. They're just countable in some way. So that's the difference between continuous and discrete. Now, when you're talking about qualitative, we also have two different sets for qualitative. There is qualitative, which is called ordinal. This means that there is some order. You can arrange these in an order. Order. The word ordinal means order. And then there is something other, which is qualitative, which is called nominal. There is no order. Let's see an example. So for instance, you can have an order in pain levels. So the pain level is the order is, let's say, between 1 and 10, right? Or, you know, not very severe, you know, severe, very severe, extremely severe. Those are orders that you have. There is an order associated with the actual measurement. Now, nominal has no order. For example, if you were talking about eye color, so somebody that might have brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, and then we can take shades in between, maybe, depending on the study, but there is no order in that, right? It's not like somebody who has blue eyes would be at lower order than someone who has brown eyes or something like that. There is no order at all that it's associated with that. Patient symptoms that you have in a treatment are nominal. So for instance, if a patient receives a rash, another patient might receive high temperatures, another patient might have stomach pain. Those are all kind of data points that we have that we can measure for the variable, but there is no order to them. So we call that nominal. So here, for these examples that are qualitative, color of leaves in October, so you can set them red, yellow, brown, something like that. This would be nominal. There is no really no order. Unless you're talking about, for example, you have to be careful. You can say color, but shades of the red color of leaves in October. Shades. So for example, if you take the shade which might be yellow, so shades of yellow, now you have an order. You would create, you know, very faint and or maybe medium yellow, very extremely bright yellow. Now you're creating order. So that would be ordinal qualitative variable. 
But if it's just colors in general that you're looking for, that would be nominal. What else here is? Patient's pain level. We've mentioned this. This is ordinal. Drug symptoms. We've mentioned this. This is nominal. And you can have many more examples like these. I hope that you found this useful. The difference between these variables of quantitative and qualitative and then seeing the difference between continuous discrete and then also ordinal or order and nominal with no order. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video.